Hey guys, I'm Nate. Welcome back to Red Tech and the continuation of IPP2. In this episode, I'm going to walk you through the UI and cover the new additions with our image processing pipeline. First thing you'll notice is the new firmware has a splash screen to indicate that the camera's initializing. Immediately, you'll notice that we've moved a few things around in order to simplify the menu structure. When you hit Menu, the first new addition you'll see is Image. Let's get right to it and access the new image controls. Currently, the camera will default into a legacy mode, which has all of our original look settings, as well as our former gamma and color spaces, like Dragon Color 2 and Red Gamma 4. To change over to our new image pipeline, select IPP2 from the mode pulldown. Now, let's take one step back and show you how the new image menu has changed under IPP2. You'll notice that it's become simpler with fewer options, and we've added CDLs to go along with your standard white balance, ISO, and 3D LUTs. White balance has been left exactly the same with your Kelvin and tint adjustments. With the Helium specifically, we've recalibrated the ISO, boosting it one stop to bring it more in line with your light meters and to better protect your highlights. Next up, CDL. You're going to notice that it has all the ASC CDL standards of slope, power, offset, and saturation. If you've already created a CDL, you can copy it onto a CDLs folder onto a red mag. From there, you can import the CDL to the camera and your settings will populate. The cool part is that the CDL information will live within the R3D file. Lastly, 3D LUT. You can import and store all of your creative 3D LUTs through the import export button and apply any of them by selecting it in the pulldown. Now, let's head back to our image pipeline settings. The first thing you'll see is that color space and gamma curve are locked in. This is because we're basing everything off of the new red wide gamut RGB and log 3G10, bringing a consistent standard to all red footage. Next, you'll notice output transform. These are basically settings that turn your red wide gamut log 3G10 into a standard color space. Keep in mind that these are just metadata settings and can be changed at any time. The first on the list is output color space, which will depend on your intended output display. We have the industry standard of Rec. 709, we have Rec. 2020 for your HDR monitors, and we also have P3 for projection. Next up, output tone map. This is the level of contrast which determines how much separation you want from the darkest and lightest part of your image. Note, this is display specific. If you want to adjust contrast, that would be done on your CDL or LUT. We have high, our default, medium, and low contrast. So choose which best suits your SDR or HDR display. If you've created a 3D LUT with your own tonal curve built in, you have the option to choose none. The last option on our output transform is highlight roll off. This will let you determine if you want a smooth highlight roll off at your top end, or if you want to retain a hard slope for more contrast in your highlights. For output tone map and highlight roll off, most will generally stick to the medium default settings. Remember that this is still just metadata and it can be changed later. We've added an output summary tab so you can quickly see what metadata is applied to the R3D as well as whatever proxy file you've chosen to record. A couple more tweaks worthy of mention is that we've broken down the displays menu into monitors and overlays. In monitors, all of the outputs are easily laid out so you can choose which one without needing to search a drop-down menu. We've added a display preset option uh, which would be specific to each monitor. Everything else more or less should look pretty familiar. Overlays contains exactly that. All of your graphic overlays and your tools like focus check, exposure, um, or geoscope. Uh, one important thing to note is that the modes menu has changed to status, which basically contains all your status indicators. All right, load up the new firmware, have a look, let us know what you think, and I'll see you out there.